How's it going guys, I'm Jared and welcome back to Trash Classics. Now I'm gonna warn you guys, my appraisal of this game will be much easier to take in if you refrain from screaming the words fan service, fanboy, or asshole at the screen every couple of seconds. That being said, this game is pretty much fan service for fanboy assholes like myself. Taking place during the events of Resident Evil 2 and 3, Operation Raccoon City has you controlling a team of badass paramilitary mercenaries working for the Umbrella Corporation who just so happened to be present during the incident that caused the zombie outbreak in Raccoon City. Now your team is being blamed for the accident, and the whole of the game is spent completing missions that will cover up Umbrella's involvement. Management needs you at the Raccoon City Police Department. Umbrella had a secret arrangement with Police Chief Brian Irons Garrett and earn enough favor with the company to warn evac from the city. While this is kind of a simple premise, it actually fits pretty well into the previous game's established lore. We all knew that Umbrella had several teams in play around the city, and there was enough chaos going on that we may not have noticed this small covert unit going about their business. As a matter of fact, 90% of the game follows a pretty canon story that fills in the gaps and sees your characters interacting with some major players in the RE universe like Mikhail, Hunk, and Nemesis. But unfortunately, a very small part of the game throws the possibility of continuity out the window. But we'll get into that in a second. In the meantime, let's talk about some gameplay, which is a pretty bog-standard third-person affair and, oddly enough, doesn't even match up to the tight controls found in RE4. Moving your chosen merc around feels very constrained and kind of seems like the developers were more inspired by the shitty controls found in the Gears of War series instead of drawing from the wealth of solid setups in the very series they were creating for. Aiming your weapon feels pretty solid and carries a good amount of weight, but the game's shooting still falls short of being really enjoyable most of the time. Apparently the developers were good enough at their craft to create good shooting mechanics, but lacked the know-how to place it in proper environments and circumstances. Most enemies in the game will be in small areas, but Operation Raccoon City's shooting is really tailored for much longer range. With regular zombies, this can be easily remedied, but for crimson heads, lickers, or hunters, this becomes a real problem. These guys are fast as hell and will often get right in your face, effectively rendering your gunshots useless. And I guess the developers understood this flaw, because holding L1 will draw your sidearm and begin firing and auto-locking on any enemy in sight. And I'll be honest, it looks and feels really cool. On launch, one of the most damning criticisms against Operation Raccoon City was the multitude of annoying bugs that could be found. When I first played the game, I found that all the sound will cut out at specific parts, and I needed to quit back to the Xbox home screen just to get it back. However, that was two years ago, and in that two-year time span, the game's been patched to hell and back. As a matter of fact, on my current playthrough, I couldn't find anything even close to a bug, with the exception of some enemies phasing through the background objects after a melee kill. Like I said before, the game comes damn close to a canon storyline, but falls shy when for some reason your team ends up chasing after Leon Kennedy and Claire Redfield. This part of the game feels rushed and doesn't fit well with what you've experienced so far. Obviously this was included as fan service and feels just about as cheap as it sounds kind of like Pyramid Head existing in any other game than Silent Hill 2. Because he can't. That's right, New Age Silent Hill fans, I'm calling you out. But anyways, the rest of the game could have easily existed in current Resident Evil lore, but this one area and a decision the player is forced to make at the end ruins all of that, and for no reason. Chasing after Leon wasn't particularly fun, and I feel like the game would have been better overall if this part was excluded. Okay, so I know how this looks. I mean, if you have ears, chances are you've heard some bad stuff about this game. And I just got done slamming the controls in the story. So why am I covering it in a show called Trash Classics? Well, despite all the game's many problems, I actually had a really good time with it. Even though the controls were pretty uninspired, they couldn't ruin the fun of blasting hordes of zombies in detailed and spooky locations. Walking through the streets of Raccoon City feels like taking a stroll down memory lane. Everything looks accurate, and you can tell the game's creators put a large amount of time into recreating the zombie-ridden megalopolis. And as you would assume, this detailed environment makes it easy for the player to immerse themselves into the experience. Seeing old friends like tyrants, slickers, and hunters being airdropped all over the city can really work over an RE fan's nostalgia center. Of course, it's hard to ignore the crappy cover-based shooting and boring enemy soldier encounters, but the game really shines when zombies come bursting out of a boarded up storefront or spill out of an elevator car, putting your back against the wall with barely any ammo and two dead teammates. During these parts, I got flashbacks of the intro to Resident Evil 3, and fans of the series can all agree that this has been a long time coming. The game also has a pretty cool inventory system that lets you unlock better weapons and improve your merc's ability to use them, with points gained from completing main missions and side goals. 
Finding a mercenary that looks cool and making them specialize in your favorite method of gameplay is easy and makes things feel more personalized. Listen, I know what you've heard and I'm not saying these reviewers were lying because it's mostly true, but I think in pointing out the game's flaws, these reviewers failed to mention the really good aspects. Chances are most of you will not find any of this appealing, but this show's not about finding perfect games that no one knows of, it's about giving a fair shade to games that have been, well, trashed. There's a small number of you that may have strayed away from this one based solely on its terrible reviews, but right now you can find a copy for about 6 to 8 bucks, and I guarantee that the Resident Evil faithfuls among us will indeed find a gem buried under all this bad game design. Don't get me wrong, Operation Raccoon City won't be winning any awards, but I just know that some of you will manage to have a good time with this one in spite of the many, many flaws, and honestly, that's why I make this show. While it may have frustrating controls, a lame story, and wonky overall gameplay, it's also dark, immersive, and for the most part, it's a love letter to everyone who's ever dreamed of standing back to back with a partner and mowing down walking corpses in Raccoon City. You can call it rushed, annoying, or poorly designed, but me? I call it a trashed classic. Alright guys, thanks for checking out another episode of Trash Classics. If you like this one, you may get into my top 5 features that need to return to Resident Evil, or my review of another survival horror game called Obscure. And for those of you who hastily unsubscribed when you saw the title of this video, feel free to subscribe again. If anything, just do it to be ironic, trust me, that decision will carry a lot of weight with that group of hipsters you've been trying to hang out with lately.